You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Okay, got more on Maggie. You ready or not? Here I go again. Maggie could not believe this. I can't believe this is a freaking Hummer. You sure know where to go? Maggie said. Trust me, I do. I'm following Kimizuki, alright? Aurora said. Sure, sure. And I'm the Queen of England. This is just great. Okay, we need a really good tactic. What are these guys up to and what is up with this Gurren guy? Do these people even trust him? Aurora said. I don't know, Lola replied. I have a feeling he's kind of weird. Really, really weird. Like he's hiding something. <laughs> you know, I feel like I can hear Solo's thoughts, Aurora said. Maggie perked. Really? What's Solo thinking? Solo's thinking that Gurren kind of reminds him of, um... What's his name? Commander Smith. Oh, shit! That guy is nothing like Commander Smith. Give me a freaking break. Commander Smith is stoic, serious, and very tough. Gurren, I can never take this guy seriously. He is nothing like Commander Smith. And besides, he's a lieutenant colonel. That makes him in the back of the bus. Sorry. Maggie said, back of the bus? Look at you. You look like you're back in the bus. <sighs> Are we even there yet? Maggie moaned. <sighs> Don't make me turn this car around and decide to, f to forfeit. <sighs> fine, fine. Where are we supposed to go? In an area? There's more infestations as expected. I believe Gurren knows about it, Barrer said. Oh, so now he knows about the infestations? Great! Our secret is exposed. Not exactly. He's not mentioning this to the Shinoa squad. Neither to you. So, what do we do now? Simple. We're going after the infestations. And I believe we are not alone. Jeez, where the hell is Silver? And where's Chloe? And Tilda? We're gonna see Tilda soon. I don't want to freaking see Tilda. Tilda really gets on my nerves. Sooner, they ran into some sort of trouble, but everyone managed to get out of the car, out of their vehicles. However, the vehicles almost nearly hit them, but Maggie managed to push them out of the way and not making sure that anyone dies, but she did make sure because she could have really lost her guard up. When she saw that she actually kicked the vehicle right up in the air, she was shocked. And then she cried out, what a ride! Woo! Nice! She exclaimed, wow, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe it either, because I don't know my own strength. Ah, uh, and here we have the appetizers and the main course, Maggie said. Careful, Shinoa said. You sound like a vampire. And if I do sound like a vampire, I'm going to really ram my heels right up your anus. <laughs> anus sounds quite funny. Yeah, as in your anus is going to feel a lot of pain when I'm done. What did I just say about the violence? Barrer said, sorry, mom. Come on, be on your best behavior. <laughs> Why do I have to be stuck with the freaking lavender hair girl? <sighs> However, during this time, Maggie stumbled across some sort of broken down place area, like a plaza. There, she saw in the window of an axe. Then she said, hey guys, did you really think that maybe, um, those weapons called Curse Gear would really help you out? Are you sure I can't handle any action? Shinoa was confused. What do you mean? She asked. I mean something like this. 
Maggie said. She punched the glass open, making everyone jump. Maggie grabbed an axe that was in the window. Ooh, would you look at this? So awesome. And I can really chop off some heads. Mitsuba sighed with relief. Seriously? The hell's wrong with you girls? Mitsuba scolded. Maggie put the axe right behind her, and she cocked her hip a bit and said, We're total psychos. It's what we do, she said. Come on, let's go, she said. Yeah, this is what my life has come to, dealing with a psychotic little witch. I heard that. You were supposed to, Ferrer said. Now let's get moving. However, dealing with the infestations was not really not so good. It was really tricky. But having to deal with a lot of trouble lately. Maggie began to freak out when she heard a maniacal laugh. Maggie uttered out, Uh-oh. Brer shouted, Not good. And then Maggie was filled with dread. Oh my god. Oh my god, what's he doing here? That's when Barrers cried out, Everyone, scatter! And they did. Maggie managed to lose sight of Yoichi. Hey kid, Yoichi, where'd you go? That's when she heard a coughing and gagging sound. She rushed over to Yoichi. Oh, oh my god, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Ugh. He actually splashed me with something. What was it? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, come on, kid. Let's go. Is Yoichi okay? Yeah, yeah, he was having a bit of a coughing fit, but he's okay. He, he really is. Yeah. Man, that's gonna suck so bad. It's gonna suck so bad, I think I'm going to wilt away and die. Maggie said with a moan. I mean, we're all going to die. Doesn't that matter? Barrer sighed. Look, calm down. We're gonna be just fine. It's not like we're gonna be attacked by monsters or anything. They managed to get to someplace safe, but while resting there, it seems Tommy Rollins managed to come across the Moon Demon Company. He was making announcements and all sorts of other things, and then he said something that made Maggie's blood run cold. Just as soon as that nasty freaking son of a bitch by the name of Yoichi Saotomi stays away from my Maggie. Maggie wilted a bit. <sighs> oh no! She said, stressing. Damn it, I know it's him. I know it's him. Brer was feeling a bit annoyed. Oh man, what the heck is going on now? Then, Tommy said, You know, my dear boy, Sal Tommy, I hope you didn't really get my word of staying away from my girl, but I'm gonna make sure you do. What is he talking about? You said. What did you do? However, Yoichi panicked. I, I didn't do anything. Honest. Maggie said, Hey, Yoichi, calm down, okay? Um, Maggie, who is this Tommy guy? This guy who also calls himself Scratchthorn? What does he want with me? I never did anything. That's the thing, Sal Tommy. Anyone who comes across me, he goes and tries to kill them. That's when Yoichi began to scratch the back of his neck. Actually, he was scratching all sides, and he also rubbed at his own arms and also his face. Maggie looked concerned. Hey, you okay, kid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing, really. 
It's just that I haven't got a chance to maybe wash off the stuff that this guy, Tommy, actually sprayed me with. Ugh, felt pretty gross, but it's nothing that bad. What do you mean? It was a black liquid. It wasn't really... Oh no. No, 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 no. Maggie said, panicking. This cannot be happening. He didn't. Barrera couldn't believe it. <sighs> Son of a bitch. What's happening? Mitsuba said. Maggie grabbed Yoichi by the shoulders and shouted at the rest of Shinoa's squad. Get this guy to a medic! Now! What? What's going on? You're in terrible danger. We're all gonna die. What? What do you mean? Yoichi asked. No sooner than that he spoke. There was a monster of an infestation. It lunged right over at Yoichi. Yoichi tried to fight back, but that monster was a lot stronger, and it looked like it was trying to kill him. Maggie managed to save Yoichi and took down the beast. Yoichi began to convulse a bit, and he looked like he was going to die. But luckily, Barrer and Maggie saved his life. He's going to be just fine. He's going to need some rest, Barrer said. Maggie began to whimper. <laughs> no, he tried to kill someone that I was close to and talking to, and now he's coming after me. He wants only me. He's my freaking admirer that kills a lot of people who comes an inch closer to me. Do you know how much painful that's going to be? Oh my god. Oh, so you do have an admirer, Shinoa said. That wasn't a question. Yes, I did. I do. He had a crush on me. He wanted to buy me a freaking drink. I told him no, I'm not really interested. Does he listen? No. And it was because of me, I humiliated him. And now he thinks some people that I hang out with are really not a good crowd. At least that's what he thinks. Now, what does that say? Um, uh, an obsessed stalker? Exactly. You're getting my memo, girl. I knew you would. And now that's why I'm bringing this axe around. And you better say to me, Maggie, you better be careful with that axe. Well, you should be. Under your condition, you seem like you're going to lose it. I'm already losing it, okay? It's like losing your purity. You don't know when until it's gone. Okay, did you really have to go and say that? Barrer said, moaning. What? It's true. It's just like that. Insanity and purity are both the same things. They're two different things. But the only thing they have in common, Maggie continued, is that you lose it. Yeah, you lose your cherry, you lose your freaking mind, and then shit gets real. <sighs> it's because of me, isn't it? No, it's not, Burrow said. It's not because of you. Tommy's going out of his head, and he's driving you insane. Ugh, driving me insane? This guy really needs to get some medical help. I am not interested. I'm so alone. You know what? I'm watching over Yoichi. You guys can handle this yourselves. You know he's going to be fine. We're going to be resting here for a bit. Fine. See you before I care, Maggie said. <laughs> God. God. Yeah, I know. She's gone pretty crazy. So have I. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for listening and watching. See you next time.